Your dream has always been to make an action film set in the wilderness, inspired by your favorite 80s film. Where did you draw inspiration from as you be began to write Sisu? First Blood, Blood is one of the biggest influences, definitely, and, and the old Western films and and uh, and it's some kind of combination of all that with the modern twist. <laughs> Early on in the movie, it's established that Sisu is a really difficult word to describe. Has there been a moment in your own life or career when you've had to muster up the courage and the determination when all hope is lost? And did you channel those experiences into the character as you were writing this film? Yeah. The story behind how Sisu was born, the script is just like that because uh, it it's been like eight years since I've done a film, and uh, and then the pandemic came and everything mm -hmm. went to like really fucking shit, and and uh, I felt awful, and I, I thought that I will never do anything anymore, and and I've lost everything, and. I, I was so jealous and angry and all that kind of stuff. And winter came and it was dark. And, <laughs> and from that darkness, I don't know what happened, but uh, I really went to my office and started writing like this. Like <laughs> and uh, that's how Sisu was born. Yeah, and you created a fantastic film. You've worked with some of these actors on your previous projects. As you were creating this story, were you writing with these particular actors in mind? How did knowing what they were capable of shape this narrative? Uh, well, Yorma was definitely the the one I immediately had had in mind when I was writing and when when I had the first idea of the film. Also, because I I couldn't like done this with anyone else basically, because I knew exactly what I'm gonna get with doing with uh, doing this with Yorma and and uh, Yorma knows me very well and he understands what what I'm trying to achieve, so we really like gave everything we got to create this character without no words. Yeah. It's a very daring film. You know, the setting and the environment is a character in itself, and you all shot this on location. Why was that so vital to the filming experience? Well, well, I think the, uh, that you need to go somewhere far away and in the middle of nowhere with the crew and with the actors to do something special. Uh, I don't want anyone to go home for the night like with the family and stuff like that it, it's so much more like fun and and uh it gives more energy to the film when mm -hmm. you are just doing this one thing and and you're only seeing the people you work with and because it's not like it's it's a couple of months of your life just to squeeze everything you got into your film and i really love that kind of movie making and there's such an unpredictability when you're working on shooting on location and working with animals. What was the biggest challenge that you faced uh, on the set? Horse. Horse was. I didn't have any fun with the horse. I uh, I almost cried in one day because the horse escaped and we found it from like 10 kilometers away from the mountains and everything, the props and stuff, the horse had it on his back. They were all scattered all oh. over the wilderness. And <laughs> so we lost almost a day, day of shooting because of that really annoying horse. <laughs> you know, the, the cast has talked at length about how clear you were with your vision, but I imagine as a writer director, you also want to leave room for actors to interpret the material. How were you able to find that balance and what was it like getting to collaborate with them on this project? It's usually, it works. It works at, as the same way every time. Like I have an idea how to make it uh, I know the location well, I know everything, I, I know the people well, but of course, every time you make the first rehearsal of, of the scene, you understand that 
something needs to be changed. So I always um, I'm open to because it all it, it always is a bit different what you think. So it's always the same story that when you see the first rehearsal, you are changing something to make it work hmm. as as best way it, it can. That's the process. And this is such a visual masterpiece. Is there a particular scene that you're really excited for audiences to see when it comes out? Well, there's a lot of scenes with I, <laughs> I want ask the audience to see. Uh, I love it. I love the part where Atami finds the gold vein. I love the scene where he first encounters with the Nazi troops and when the action starts and and um, well, because I, I like how the film surprises you throughout the way and, and uh, how, how uh, far Adam is willing to go to get his gold back. The, the film has also made its way around the festival circuit. It's been incredibly well received. What do you think is resonating most with audiences and what is it like getting to share this film in the theater with a live audience. That's my like my price in a way because I really mm -hmm. love to be in a screening and different kinds of audiences to because I've seen this movie in many countries now and and uh, and it's always a different thing yeah. in a way. But of course the same things resonate. But uh, and I'm always waiting for the first kill to happen because everyone will blow their minds out yeah. when, it, when it happens. And, and uh, it's such a huge fun for me to, to witness that, that almost kind of like a rock concert kind of mayhem going on in, in, in that theater.